Hi there, Morgan with Event Answer here, and today I'm going to show you how to make these crepe paper twists. They're an inexpensive and simple way to add a huge impact to your next party. So I'm going to show you how to create these, but also three different ways to set them up in your party space that'll work best for you. So let's get right into the project and I'll show you how I did it. For this project, I've gathered coordinating colors of crepe paper rolls. Mine are 8 feet long and 19 inches wide. The important thing to remember here is the weight of the crepe paper. You're going to be more successful the heavier the crepe paper is. So the one I'm using today is 180 grams per square meter. And I'll have that in the description box below so you'll know exactly where I got mine. The first step is to unroll the crepe paper and lay it in half as flat as possible. You want the edges to align both lengthwise and widthwise and then you're going to fold it over one more time so it's in quarters and it's important that this lays flat and square because we're going to be putting the cuts in and we want them to all be equal. Just don't pull too hard on the crepe paper and pull those little ruffles out of it. Now I'm using my 6 inch sewing ruler here and putting it in the very center of the roll. This is going to help me space my cuts one inch apart all the way down the roll, but this also keeps me from cutting too deep into the middle. If you cut too far and the center point isn't strong enough, when you go to twist this, it'll actually rip or kink and it won't have that nice graceful spin. So I'm just using a regular pair of scissors here and cutting one inch segments out of the crepe paper. And scissors works really well if you're making a couple of these for a party. But if you are going to be doing this for an event where you need lots of them, I would highly suggest getting this other cutting ruler that has one inch segment holes in it. And then you can cut your crepe paper using a fabric roller, um, like a roller cutter. And that's what I did when I made over 20 of these for a special event. And it goes a lot faster if you're trying to make a bunch of those. So I'll have that linked below as well. So you can check that out if you're planning to make a bunch of these. Once all the fringe has been cut, find the very end of the roll. And what I'm gonna do is take a quarter inch dowel rod here and cut it to the width of the roll. I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors to score it a little bit and then pop it in half. And with a hot glue gun, I'm going to attach the dowel rod to the crepe paper. So be generous with the glue, get it all the way around the dowel rod and roll it up because we're going to cover the entire dowel rod with the crepe paper so that you can't see it. Now once you've done this to one end, repeat on the other end. And that's all it takes to make these crepe paper twirls. Super simple, just lots of cutting involved and your two dowel rods. So now that the twists are made, we're ready to start installing. And the first method is just using some simple packaging tape and taping this to the wall. So say you're in a location where you can't reach the ceilings or you're not allowed to put thumbtacks into anything, you can take a little bit of tape on each end of the dowel rod and then you're just gonna tape it up as high as you want. Make sure it's well attached to the wall and then you're gonna pull the bottom part away from the wall and start spinning it in the direction that you want but make sure you pull it away from the wall so that the twirl gets all the way to the top. I didn't do that here, so it's kind of flat up there. So make sure it makes it all the way to the top before you tape the ends to the floor. The second method is if you're using a backdrop stand with any kind of backdrop. Now mine is fabric, so what I'm gonna do is take some straight corsage pins, you could even use safety pins, and just pin that dowel rod up to the very top near the top rod and then twist just like you did before all the way down, making sure you've pulled it away from that fabric to twist and then push the base back towards the fabric and tape it to the floor again, making sure that tape is on each end of the dowel rod so that it doesn't accidentally twist away from you. The last method is actually my favorite because this is where the twirls can really shine and you can see the full twists. So I've put a little bit of tape on either end and I'm just pinning through that tape using push pins into the ceiling. Now if you've got a drop down ceiling, you can also do this and use binder clips to attach to that drop down. If your ceiling is too tall for your twirls, you can put a little bit of fishing line on each side of the dowel rod and then pin that to the ceiling if you need a little bit more length. So I just went ahead and twisted this and then taped it to the floor once again. But I love the freestanding because you could put these together in clusters and they can really shine and move and give you that dynamic look and the volume you need to fill your space. 
I love the playful nature of this project. It's so cute in a space and really easy to install without a lot of tools required. I do want to mention the different ways that you can style these. So this blue one here, I've done a very loose twist. I've only turned it a couple times before I taped it to the floor. So it gives a nice loose turn. Whereas this white one here, I turned multiple times before I taped it down. And that gives a tighter twist and more of a spiky nature to it. So definitely take some time to play with how you turn them and how tight you do it. Um, and you also want to take into consideration the height of your ceilings because uh, that can change the nature of the twist. Um, I'm working with an eight foot ceiling and like I said earlier, these are eight foot rolls of crepe paper. So the one where I have it twisted tighter, I'm actually taping it at the very end of the twist to the floor, whereas this blue one that has a looser twist, I've rolled up a little bit on the bottom to take up a little bit more of that space because the key to these is keeping them taut. If they're not taut, you'll have a little bit of a looser turn at the top and it'll be really spirally at the bottom. The other thing you want to keep in mind is the humidity of the space that you'll be in. These will stay pretty well for a day or two, maybe three, without sagging and looking droopy. But if you're in a humid climate or you're somewhere where there's a swimming pool, um, you may struggle a little bit with these drooping, all the little fringe bits. So if you are somewhere where you know it's going to be humid, make sure these are the last decorations that you put up so they look at their very best when you're ready to have your party. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. Um, if you enjoyed it, let me know by giving this video a like. I look forward to seeing you in another video as we continue to do more projects to help you put on great parties. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!